Austru, Austru, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea la tale, Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale. Shalom! Shalom to you, David. Good afternoon. Rabbi Haim Asa has joined us for another story, story number 25. It's going to be very interesting. Today, it's going to be in 2013, uh, actually only a few days old, this story. And here we are in beautiful Fullerton, California. On Saturday, June 1st, 2013, my name is David Liviano. I have the honor and privilege of having a conversation with Rabbi Haim Asa from Burgas, Bulgaria. Thank you, David. Welcome. In the past, we've spoken about history. Today, I would like to speak about this one week in end of May of, 9th of 2013. I received the telegram from Elena Poptudorova, the ambassador of Bulgaria to the United States of America. Uh, and um, in Washington DC, of course. And she's a great lady and a dear friend of mine, of ours. Uh, I know her well and I'm very excited about the fact that she was reappointed for the second time. She was ambassador here uh, uh, 10 years ago. She went back to Bulgaria after three or four years and she was reappointed because she's so good and so effective. Well, the essence of the message from Elena Poptudorova, the ambassador, was that she needed my help to write a letter of recommendation on behalf of a person who has been gone now for, for 55 years, Dimitr Peshev, because the city council, or I don't know exactly how Washington DC is ruled, whether it is the mayor or, or whatever it is, uh, but the city council of Washington DC is going to decide whether a certain uh, roundabout or certain plaza next to the Bulgarian embassy in Washington DC is going to be named after Dmitry Peshev. So it will become the Dmitry Peshev uh, roundabout or the, the Dmitry Peshev plaza, etc., etc. Well, as soon as the Macedonian uh, establishment heard that they're going to be honoring a Bulgarian who was really member of the pro-fascist party in, 19, in the 40s during the war. They immediately protested and said that no plaza should be named after a person, etc., 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 of such a background. We need to remind our viewers that in the, during the Second World War, Russia, I mean Bulgaria, like Romania, was ruled by a monarchy in, uh, in Bulgaria's case, he was King Boris the III. Third. And the people that saved my life, our lives, the entire 50,000 Jewish uh, community of, of Bulgaria were basically our king, King Boris the Third, the church, the Bulgarian National Church, which is part of the Orthodox Church, but totally different than, let's say, the church in Russia or Romania, where the church, uh, the church officials or policy was anti-Semitic. Right. In Bulgaria, it was totally different. And the third person responsible, not person, but personality, responsible for our uh, uh, saving was Dmitry Peshev who was the vice president of the Sobronia, of the parliament. There was still 
democracy to speak of, meaning to say there was a king and there was the parliament, and the parliament was uh, ruled by the uh, pro-fascist party, of course, but and Dmitry Peshev was part of that establishment. Give us an example of Dmitry Peshev's role directly in not allowing the Jewish population of Bulgaria, proper Bulgaria, not being sent to the concentration camps in Poland and Germany? The, the best I can say is that when members of the Jewish community of this elected, he, he, was, he was a congressman, he was elected by a certain district, when members of the Jewish community came to him and said, we have heard that the Jews of Trace and Macedonia are being loaded on the trains and we think that we are going to be the next shipment to the East, resettlement, which means really death or uh, uh, labor till death, labor within a few months. Death. He immediately organized 43 members of his party. Remember, this is the the the, the, the pro-fascist supposedly faction of the parliament. We need to. I'm sorry yeah. for the interruption, Rabbi. We need to give just a small, a little color to this whole story by explaining that the monarchies in countries like Bulgaria and Romania had a choice either to be with the Nazi regime and have a special status and not be invaded or not to be and immediately they would have been invaded and taken over exactly. and being treated, the whole population would have been treated as hostile, uh, as a hostile country. So the monarchs of Bulgaria, Romania, Romania. Uh, the kings decided that it's better, at least that was the plan in the first stage, to... It, it was the correct decision, right. in my opinion, because they saw what happened to Yugoslavia and Poland. They saw what happened to Poland, That's right. to Greece, to every country, right. but those who joined the Nazi axis of the Nazi party. Now, if we could have gone back to the 1930s, when England and France were uh, capable of defeating Hitler before he started the armament and all that and all that, right. This would have been different. That's right. But with the current situation, neither Bulgaria nor Romania had a chance to survive uh, uh, without being squashed, That's right. conquered by the Nazi uh, forces. And would have meant the loss of tens of thousands of everything. lives and so on and so yeah. destruction. Plus the immediate liquidation of the uh, Jewish of the Jewish population. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to make another interjection until you get back to uh, Dmitry Peshev, who gave your example, one or more, that uh, the tragic story of the Bulgarian Jews living in the annexed provinces of Trakia in Macedonia, which were given by Hitler to Bulgaria as sort of compensation for joining along. As a bounty. It, as a bounty was a very difficult situation because the king did not have enough power and did not want to risk his own people's lives by giving passports and full Bulgarian citizenship to the Jews of Trakia and Macedonia, which were now part of Bulgaria, but did not enjoy the same rights and privileges like the Bulgarian citizens of Bulgaria with passports and citizenship which is the tragic reason why the, Bulga the Jews, the Bulgarian Jews from Trakia and Macedonia were shipped out and they could not have been saved. Mm -hmm. So back to your story about uh, the yeah. Dmitry Pesha. Exactly. And um, because they did not have Bulgarian citizenship, they were considered to be uh, subjects to Nazi rule. That's right. They fell and, under the and, and, control yeah. of the Nazis so rather than the control. So they were not different than the Jews of Greece, who were exterminated, right. Yugoslavia, killed. Poland, uh, and Yugoslavia, the, the right. same thing, and of course Poland. So conclude for us why you think Dmitry Peshev does deserve okay. a name in the history books as a savior and a good person, okay. though he officially he was part of the so-called pro-Nazi regime. Dmitry Peshev gathered 43 members of his party. He wrote a petition to the king 
and to the Sobranian, Sobranian being the, the, parliament, the parliament, asking that the Jewish people, the 50,000 Jews of Bulgaria, be considered as Bulgarian citizens without any discrimination, without any resettlement in the East. So basically there were forces at work in the parliament that were truly pro-Nazi. I forget the name of the Bulgarian commander that was working, uh, Belev, I think. Belev was the commissar. The commissar appointed by and, Hitler. And he was worse than Eichmann, or That's at right. least he was trained by Eichmann. And he, was, he had signed an agreement with Beckerle. Uh, to ship out all the Jews. Yeah, and with uh, the Minister of Interior, etc., etc., and the Prime Minister. So everything was ready for our destruction. destruction. So Dmitry Pesha basically confronted and fought exactly. politically uh, Belev and yeah. was able to convince on moral grounds and on legal grounds yeah. why the Jews of Bulgaria are Bulgarian Bulgarians. citizens and they deserve to be treated with the same rights of protection and civil rights like all the other Bulgarian uh, Bulgarians. Well, well put and 100% correct. Now. The Macedonians have always been against the recognition of Bulgaria as a country that saved 50,000 Jews. Well, it's understandable they, they, that they're very upset, uh, and obviously anyone would be upset at the destruction of one human life, nevertheless 10,000 or 11,000 11, yeah. uh, people. So yeah. it's understandable that they're upset, but the facts are there to support that I, I would know. just like to remind our listeners that when we planted the Bulgaria forest in Israel in 1996, I was responsible for that project where we gathered a lot of money at the Beverly Hills banquet that I spoke about it uh, in uh, segment uh, 20 or 21, that that money was given to the Jewish National Fund for the planting of the forest and the forest was dedicated in 1996 and lo and behold, no sooner was the forest dedicated, the Macedonian and Thracian Jews survivors right. they, living in the state of Israel they opposed, uh, raised such a terrible cry that a commission um, um, was, was appointed. appointed to investigate the matter Judge Basky was the chairman of the uh, of the commission, the Supreme Court. Of, yeah, and they, he was of the Supreme Court, and they decided that indeed Bulgaria was not a righteous uh, uh, nation. So the lobby was very strong. Uh, the lobby on the part was very of the Macedonian survivors so and uh, all of a sudden like we are in Washington D.C. and the same Macedonian uh, forces. Voices, yeah. Uh, uh, are voicing strong opposition to the naming of a town square in honor of the righteous Gentile, Dimitri Peshev. Now, Dimitri Peshev was recognized by Yad Vashem as a righteous Gentile, Goy Sadiq, which means that he was, at, at the expense of his own life, that's right. And by the way, a short time after the, the the saving of the Bulgarian Jews, the middle pressure became nothing in the parliament and he died in dire poverty. They knocked him out, basically. Yeah, they, they, the fascists knocked so him he out. Paid the, the, he the, paid the price. He paid the price, yeah. thank God, not the ultimate price. He yeah. was still alive, but obviously yeah. he was demised. And, and, the, and the Jewish community supported him uh, financially to the rest of his life, which was uh, only about 10, 15 years later. But we never forget the people that were our saviors, and the Middle Pesha was one of them. So to the Excellency so, uh, Mrs. Ambassador yeah. uh, Todorova, and yeah. also we're reaching out to the uh, the, the survivors of the, uh, the Bulgarian Jews of Trace and Macedonia right. to reopen and look at the facts as they truly were, and Rabbi Asa was a young man, only 13, 14, 15 years old at the time, but he recollects and he knows from his own family exactly the truth of what happened. And uh, I think history needs to be revisited 
and peace be made and who deserves praise should get the praise and who deserves exactly uh, you know negative uh, exactly. admonitions and all that should get it but um, that's the message for yes. uh, ambassador I would like to to say something more about uh, uh, Pedro de Metro in the next uh, segment. story very good so uh, I have great interest and respect for what Rabbi Asa speaks I'm originally from Romania a Romanian Jew and the connecting part of our lives here is that my wife is also Bulgarian like Rabbi Haim Asa she's not from Burga she's from Sofia she's a lovely lovely lady her name is Bogdana Romanska now Liviano she's a very famous uh, she was a very famous tennis player in Bulgaria they used to call her the number four Maleva and my wife is a dedicated mother and uh, we have two beautiful children, half Romanian, half Bulgarian, and half uh, Jewish, and so on and so and forth. And American. And American, of course. So I say hello to all in Bulgaria, and Sichko Hubovo, na Sichki, i az mnogu bichem Bulgaria, i mnogu vi bogudere za Sichku, i... I od men sister. All the best to everybody, and uh, let's see story number 26. Thank you very much, Rabbi Thank Asa. Thank you, David. Hubova. Shalom. Shai mai vrem, shai mai vrem drăguță, Ana, Ca să te îmbrac, măi, cona hramă. Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cercei, măi, Ana, Dar eu n-am de unde, măi, coadară. Auzi, dragă, fata, nechi, dragă, Aseară, poli, o tamiceană. Șac cum nu sparale, să-ți cumpă sandale, buzunarele sunt goale ta. Mai apoi trecuță, încă o băncuță și pe uii încă o 